I can get you to follow up on this, George. You know, you, you have been a fantastic commentator, if you don't mind me saying, for, for a really long time. Have we had any impact on the government? What's, what is the impact of Extinction Rebellion? And, and has it had its day? Perhaps we just raise the alarm and we go home. What, what's your take on this, George? Well, the, the job's certainly not done yet. Um, there was a UN report last year showing that to stand a good chance of coming in at no more than 1.5 degrees of global heating, beyond which things get really hairy, you need a global cut of about 7.6% per year throughout this decade. And there's no government which is committed to anything like that. And yeah, it's true that we have definitely made it harder for the UK government to backtrack. We've forced them to make rhetorical commitments which is something, I mean, it's not nothing because, you know, you can then use those rhetorical commitments as leverage against them. You said you would do this, so why aren't you doing it? Uh, we definitely have raised the profile of this great existential issue, though not nearly to the extent that it needs to be raised because it like, should be at the forefront of everyone's minds. But we're not seeing action being taken by any governments on the necessary and required scale. And I know we'll get on to the coronavirus crisis soon, but, you know, one thing it has demonstrated is you can do it if you want to do it. You know, the only thing that's missing is political will. You know, the, we've got the infrastructure, the money's there if you want the money to be there. The, 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 the capacity to change society and to change what everybody's doing is there if you want it to be there. And so what's missing is that political will to take the climate crisis and the wider ecological crisis as seriously as it needs to be taken. And the only thing which is going to create that political will in a political system which is wedded to the power of money, and that's what we're really up against, is, is the billionaires, the corporations who want things to stay the same because they have benefited from that status quo. In fact, they have created that status quo. The only thing which can break politics away from their grip is a sustained campaign of non-violent civil disobedience in, in conjunction, obviously, with all the other political methods, the legitimate political methods, but that is the absolutely key catalyst which makes those other political methods effective. Now, I'm hoping that Extinction Rebellion will continue to be the highly effective catalyst that it has been in the past um, year and a half so far. Um, but, um, you know, if not XR, it will have to be another movement similar to XR learning the le lessons that we've learned from these past 18 months, but also the lessons from the past 50 years or, or more of environmental action. But the crucial thing is scale. You know, you, you can say, well, we could do it this way or we could do it that way. The most important thing is that we do it huge, that we involve vast numbers of people with a great deal of commitment on the part of those people. And, and you can sort of talk about tactics, strategy till you're blue in the face that's not the main thing the main thing is inspiring very very large numbers of people to take action and to stick with it that is what changes things